hi guys welcome to another video and in this particular video we are going to have a look about the wasp top 10 2021 statistical based proposal so we'll be talking about what is basically proposed for wasp top 10 2021 what are the changes and was it something that was necessary or is it done in right or wrong way so just for an overview to give you idea about the wasp top 10 which is going to be either released on 2021 Right. So if you don't know about the OWASP, so OWASP is basically an open web prediction security project and it's basically an online community uh, that makes freely available articles, even your methodology, documentation, uh, all those things related to web prediction security field. Right. So if you have not even visited the website www.owasp.org, please go check out this a ton of content and a lot of good uh, articles you will find there which are you know related to application security so let's jump into this wasp top 10 2021 so if you could see that i have basically uh, a, a blog url which i'll be putting in the description box you can definitely go ahead and check that and we'll be talking about first like wasp top 10 2017 which is still the is a valid one and then we'll be talking about the proposal for wasp top 10 2021 so typically every three year or four year was uh, typically release some of their top 10 guidelines or basically update the uh, OS top 10 right category so if you could see that uh, a1 and a2 are basically injection and bro broken authentication which are always you know high or critical rated bugs and always on top then you have the first changes that is you know, instead of a sensitive data exposure which was there or which is still there as per 2017 is replaced with xss because there are tons of xss that has been gather from different bug bounty platforms uh, like you know um, uh, platforms like hacker one or even exploits all the things right so that's why they have considered to increase the uh, you know severe i mean the oasp uh, ranking to a3 which was there early, earlier in the i believe on a7 right if you could see here now next comes is your sensitive beta exposure which is actually essential we need to have this sensitive beta exposure as a4 because that was really impacting in lot of uh, multiple way now one more changes that they have done uh, basically they have replaced broken access control with insecure deserialization which is good enough and in fact they have combined that uh, insecure deserialization with xxe or external xml injection kind of bug i think that is a good move because that uh, basically falls under same xml parsing and you know deserialization kind of similar concept i am not saying like both are same but a slight bit matching is there that's why they have uh, included that inside you know a5 now next thing is a6 broken access control super important lot of people are actually finding out bugs related to broken access control like horizontal privilege escalation vertical privilege escalation all those things in multiple different platform so it's good that they have uh, increased the you know rank to a6 now another thing is insufficient logging and monitoring that is on a7 I still personally feel like you know security misconfiguration is something that should be there because uh, there are a lot of misconfiguration that is happening in a real world and basically hey, different guys are you know chaining that misconfiguration vulnerability to make it critical impact even leaking token and other things right so I think like that should have been there in you know instead of A7 but I believe it was have done something and they have uh, done that by considering multiple other factor which is uh, which should be a good move but let's see so this is one of my thoughts if you have any thoughts uh, like, you know like that should be there in the uh, was top 10 2021 or which is not right or wrong do let me know in the comment box uh, we can have a good discussion or healthy discussion on that of course if some was I check that then they might find it interesting so i'm pretty excited about that if they uh, taken that point into consideration now next thing is your new one they have introduced in A8 that is your SSRF for server side request forgery. I still feel like this should be there uh, but I am really happy that uh, they have actually included SSRF in your A8. Then you have your A9 uh, that is your known uh, vulnerability which is uh, which is also there earlier and they have also taken care in the same way and then finally comes your A10 or security misconfiguration. So pretty much standard move uh, that they have done, uh, I believe this is the OWASP proposal for top 10 uh, 2021. This is, based, this is based on again various statistical data. So it is yet to finalize, please note this is a you know proposal, it's not the final one. 
No, I'm just going to provide the link as well as I'm just running through the article. You can give your time, read the entire blog, very nicely written. So you can see that was top 10 like 2003, 2004, 7, 10. That's how they have you know published every three year or four year. Uh, next, they have talking about like uh, categories overlap by showing some Venn diagram, uh, like injection, then the known issue, how these are like overlap and even excesses and all those things, right? Then talking, they are talking about methodology, uh, like something, again, you need to read through by a lot of statistical information they have added last three year XSS 20% and all those things, right? Also, they have like search query and other thing, which I think is a good idea, but let's see how far, you know, they can include that into the worst of them. So the first proposal, as we have already discussed, is about the SSRF, they are planning to add SSRF because there are a lot of SSRF already found in multiple portal and I'm sure this is a good idea also to add SSRF to OASPs top 10. Then comes your uh, merge XXE with insecure DC relation again one of the good move I am not saying like this is similar or same bug but yes yeah, maybe belong to same family and that's why they have included that. Uh, then the proposal 3 is introduce overall risk score. I think this is a good idea they are including something risk score so they have actually the risk score is basically calculated by taking average cbss and the amount of bulletins so cbss is common vulnerability score so i'll be talking about cbss maybe in a particular in a different video uh, to give you an idea like how the cbss score is calculated by taking the environment by uh, availability and even things like you know integrity and all those things so uh, network and environment and all those things so Considering those factors, CVSS score is calculated. So zero is rated to be low and ten is rated to be high. So we'll be making a new video on CVSS maybe sometime. Do let me know in the comment box if you want to know about some other uh, scoring mechanism also. But yeah, OS is also planning for uh, overall risk by uh, calculating the CVSS score or sorry, multiplying the CVSS score with amount of bulletins to give you a score, right? So. Even they have provided a table basically, so calculating the OWASP top 10, uh, 21 rating uh, like for 8.4 and then how the bulletins, how the score is getting calculated. This will be really interesting to see how this score stuff come into picture by OWASP. And uh, yeah, they have also made a result of OWASP top 10, 2017 comparison uh, to a small uh, pictures, right? So yeah, overall I believe they have done some really good movement if you think like there is something not right uh, with not wrong or not right probably do let me know in the comment box and thanks for watching this video have a great day thank you bye, -bye.